Good morning. Great to have you here at Grace United Methodist Church for our Sunday morning worship. It is a very bright but very cool day, and glad to see everyone here. Uh, yesterday, I was, as I was leaving the parsonage, I was uh, as I opened the door, I was stopped cold in my tracks, and with an emphasis on cold, I couldn't believe how cold <laughs> it was. And that was in the garage, and so I was like, oh, do I put the door up? It's going to get worse. But it wound up being fine, and I'm glad to see all of you made it uh, today. Uh, this is, and uh, hello, Zoom attendees, great to see you. Glad that you're here. Please complete the attendance form that is on your bulletin and put it in the uh, offering plate as it is passed. We'd, uh, for um, regular folks, just your name and so forth, and if you're visiting and we don't have your information, if you could complete that form, that would be great. There's also a place to put prayer requests on the back. Let's see, today is UMCOR Sunday. UMCOR is the United Methodist Committee on Relief. It is a wonderful organization. And the congregations, the funds that are given by congregations go to pay the overhead for UMCOR so that every penny of every gift that's given by those outside the congregation goes directly to benefit folks. It is a wonderful organization. They're in Ukraine, they're in Turkey and Syria. Uh, they respond very quickly. Uh, to crises, and we're very glad that they are part of us. There's this envelope as part of your bulletin packet. You can use it, or you can give online. There's a special place there for UMCOR giving online. Uh, you've received, by this time, our Easter um, letter, and um, there are options for that, too. You can use the envelope in the letter and bring it with you on Easter Sunday or some other Sunday. Or you can also give online. There's a place there for the Easter offering also. The Lent book study continues this Thursday uh, with uh, Luke, Jesus, and the Outsiders, Outcasts, and Outlaws by Adam Hamilton. We've had great discussions in that group, and we're looking forward to uh, two more great sessions. And uh, the big news coming up is our Palm Sunday brunch that is, after church, we will have a brunch in Fellowship Hall, and uh, this is going to be, Palm Sunday is two weeks away. Can you believe it? I could not believe that. So in two weeks, we'll have this. It's the final day of spring break, I know, but please come, because this is going to be great. So the menu is egg casseroles with and without meat, French toast casseroles, uh, cheese and potato casseroles, breakfast breads, and desserts by the folks in the congregation. And I may have to pull clergy rank and go first in line uh, just so I can test the food and make sure it's okay. So uh, we're really looking forward to that and, and hopefully you can, uh, you can come and join us there. Do we need help with that, Harry? Got a great group working, Harry says, and we're, we're very much uh, thrilled about that. So that's P uh, Palm Sunday, two weeks from today. And it's being catered by Roberti, Roberti Community House Culinary Arts Program. That's one of our partners through Say Grace. They do a wonderful job there, and we're looking forward to them catering uh, this meal. And as I noted last time, and we'll be doing, uh, noting this quite a few times, May 7th, a very important date, that's a Sunday, and after the service we'll be having a retreat a church-wide retreat in Fellowship Hall after the service to talk about our future. Where are we going? What does God have in, in store for us? You know, there's a lot of really positive things happening at this church, and I'm really looking forward to this time where we can all get together and give input um, on the future and the direction that we're headed. So May 7th, after church, we'll have breakfast or a meal, lunch first, and then go right into the retreat discussions. I believe that's it. So let us prepare our hearts for worship. Good morning. Good morning. Be our vision, O oh God. Be our eyes, be our hearts. Be the grace that flows through our lives. Only with your eyes can we see rightly. Let us pray. Loving shepherd, you know our names and you care for each one of us. When we face darkness and death, you walk beside us. 
When we hunger for your love, you fill us with your presence. When we do not see, you bring us into your light until your ways become visible to us and bear fruit in us. May we dwell in the house of goodness and mercy all the days of our lives. Amen. Amen. Our first reading this morning is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our gospel reading this morning is from John. As he walked along, he saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. Jesus heard they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, and who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to him, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Emily. Okay, my kid. Will you stand, please, as we prepare to sing, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. Let us 
just do thy will. Blessed Lord and only Savior, with thy love our bosoms fill. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us, love us still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast loved us, love us still. You may be seated, please. Well, this is the time we, we come together and share our joys and concerns and pray together as a church family. Um, I wanted to mention, I didn't mention um, during the announcements, a fellowship time, of course, is after church. Please come down to our fellowship hall downstairs and, and join us uh, at a time of refreshments and conversation. Always love seeing everyone there. And I forgot to mention this wonderful thing that happened this morning. The choir was rehearsing and it was beautiful. And we are looking very much to the choir returning on Easter. They were rehearsing the number that they're singing on Easter and then they'll be singing every other week, but we are so very glad the, to hear the choir uh, rehearsing again. It is wonderful. Uh, joys and concerns, uh, we want to pray, continue to pray for Chris, uh, Stacy's uh, brother who is now in hospice and uh, is not doing well at all as we probably suspect, so please be praying uh, for them. Let's continue to pray for Mark Andell who continues with his chemo treatments this Tuesday and uh, they're weekly and they'll be going on for six months. Um, we want to keep in mind uh, Nancy Waddell and John and Nancy's daughter, Amanda. Uh, they've both been fighting seizures, and so we want to keep them in our prayers. Are there other joys and concerns that you have? Uh, Harry. Yeah, I, I just want to let you know that uh, a, a few weeks ago, Lois and I asked for prayers for our, our, uh, the husband of Lois's niece. His name is Ryan Paul. Uh, he was had detected cancer shortly after Christmas and uh, he, he passed away this week. Oh. Uh, so we're heading down to St. Louis on Thursday to, for a memorial service on Saturday. But uh, keep Ryan and Ryan's family in your prayers, his wife Kara, uh, they, have, uh, they have three daughters, one who's kind of in their 20s, but one of them is just going away to college next year and one of them is still in high school. So he is 45 years old. So. Uh, keep them in your in your prayers, please. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, let's be praying for Ryan Paul and his uh, family, his wife Kara, and three daughters. He passed away of cancer at the age of 45. So please, let's keep him in our prayers. Others. Andy. Good morning. Uh, I thought I'd share a joy. Um, I think you all know uh, Zach, our oldest son, is uh, in med school, and this week was match week, and I'm super happy to announce that he uh, will start his general surgery residency at Creighton in Phoenix, uh, starting, I think, in June or July. So anyway, four years of uh, med school, and you, and you have this big decision, and you don't know what's going to happen. So he was thrilled to uh, have a place in a, in a general surgery residency starting, uh, starting this summer. Um, so that's my joy. And then I was sitting here in the pew thinking about uh, Pastor Cal's comment about pastoral privilege to be the first in line for the potluck. <laughs> and I was thinking about we definitely need to let that happen because there's going to be another time when we need a first and nobody's looking to be first. And so let him go first. And then that, that pastoral privilege is going to come back around. <laughs> time. Um, thank you for your kindness, Andy. Much appreciated. We're so thrilled that Zach is, is entering this new phase, and we wish him well at Creighton. That is wonderful. General surgery, fantastic. Others? Carolyn? Um, our family is heading down to the Dominican Republic next week. Um, we're going to be volunteering at a school that Derek's aunt and uncle run. They've been missionaries down there for about 30 years. So um, just prayers for safe travels and a meaningful experience for our family. Thanks. Absolutely. Wonderful. So the Hutchinson Johnsons are going to the Dominican Republic to work at a school during spring break. How noble of them. Excellent. I wonder wonderful thing to do. Others. 
All right, let's pray together. God, our faithful shepherd, we depend on you for everything we need, and you respond, respond with abundant provision. So we come to you now together in prayer. We pray for the people of Ukraine and others around the world living in the midst of war. Bring an end to these senseless conflicts. Teach us to put away our weapons, taking up instead the cause of peace and reconciliation. By the power at work in Christ, break down the walls of hostility we build so that we may learn to live together graciously. Generous God, you tenderly care for each person you have created and shine light into the lives of all. Guide us as your church to adopt your heart for those we encounter every day. Pursue us with your goodness and your faithful love. Help us to bring sight to those who are spiritually blind and missing the abundant life found in you. God of mercy, bring healing to those who are ill in whatever way they suffer. Bring release to those who are held captive by old hurts or new bonds that oppress and entangle. Bring freedom to those unjustly accused, relief to those burdened with debt, comfort to all who suffer from ill treatment of any kind. And Lord, we bring you our own joys and concerns. We pray for Chris and for Stacy and for their family going through this extremely difficult time. Lord, lift their spirits, help them each day, give them strength, give them energy, and help them to face what is ahead. And Lord, we pray for Mark as he continues with his chemo treatments. We pray for Nancy and Amanda uh, experiencing seizures. We're so very glad that uh, Amanda's doctors have found a new medication for her that is very effective. Lord, we pray for Kara and uh, Ryan's family, the three daughters and others, Lord, how, how sad to lose someone at the age of 45. Lord, we just ask you comfort them and be with them at this time. We are so joyful that Zach is now going to a general surgery, surgery residency, a place where he wants to be, and we're so glad that he is able to take this next step in his career. Lord, bless him and just guide him at this time. And we're very thankful for the Hutchinson Johnson family who are going to the Dominican Republic to help with the school there. We thank them for their dedication and just pray that their ministry there may be very fruitful. Faithful shepherd, thank you for your tender care of us. Thank you for soothing the wounds of this life. Thank you for giving us sight to see you clearly as our Lord. And thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who conquered death and taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We will now receive your tithes and offerings.
above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. For all that you have done for us, Lord, especially for helping us to see your grace active in our lives, we bring you these offerings in thanks and praise. Use them to grow your kingdom on earth until Christ returns in glory. Amen. You may be seated. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Jesus, to reach out and touch him, and say that we love him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen, open our out and touch him and say that we love him. Open our ears, Lord, and help us to listen. Open our eyes, Lord, we want to see Let us pray. Lord, we wait for you, and in your word we trust. By the power of your spirit, help us to see you and to set our hearts and minds on the source of life and peace, your Son, our Savior. Amen. As we have mentioned before, in Advent, we began liturgical year A, which focuses on the Gospel of Matthew. But have you noticed, this is the third week in a row that our Gospel passage is from John. In fact, four of the six Gospel passages in Lent are Johannine. Johannine, of course, is the adjectival form of John. I learned that in seminary. And I want my seminary education to pay off, so our word for the day is Johannine. Very good. The major thrust of the Gospel of John is to portray Jesus as the divine Son of God. The miracles in the Gospel of John are referred to as signs. Less emphasis is placed on the healing itself. Rather, the focus here is on the wonders as signs, proofs, indicators, pointers, to the fact that Jesus is indeed the Son of God. The Gospel of John is also full of these wonderful stories of Jesus' encounters with individuals. They are full of dialogue, Jesus talking with and challenging the person before him. Two weeks ago, we saw the Pharisees searching Nicodemus coming in the cover of night. Last week, we saw the longest conversation in the New Testament the Samaritan woman at the well, who becomes a missionary to her own people. And here we have the man born blind, but here there are many other characters too. This story is fascinating because there are so many rich elements and insights and metaphors. It is even humorous, and we'll see that in a second. Also, it is a very long story. If you were looking at your bulletin while the passage was read, you saw that we jumped from verse 7 to verse 35. I will fill in the rest using shorthand during the message, 
and you can thank me later that I did not have the entire passage read. We begin with the disciples demonstrating an old and false teaching prevalent at the time and still today. They come upon a man blind from birth and ask, Rabbi, who has sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? The assumption is that the physical malady, blindness, was caused by sin. In the ancient world, unexplained illnesses and other physical impairments were thought to be the result of sin against the gods or God. In the book of Job, Job's friends believe that all of the dreadful things that have happened to him are the result of his sin. I am righteous, Job declares. How can you be righteous? Look at all the bad things you are suffering. They must be God's judgment, or you're doing something sinful. Jesus tells the disciples, his blindness is not due to anyone's sin, but observe how God will be glorified through this man. So part of our story is about correcting old, invalid assumptions. Now Jesus spits on the ground, mixes his saliva with the dirt to form mud, and places the mud on the man's eyes. No one is quite sure why Jesus makes this mud pack. I can picture my mother, who was very neat, reading this story and thinking, couldn't you have used a bowl of water, Jesus? Some say the mud recalls the power of God in creation found in Genesis. We are made from the dust of the ground. Remember Ash Wednesday? Others note that saliva was viewed as unclean by the Jews, but Jesus transforms it. He is using an unclean substance to perform this pure divine act. In any case... The man washes off the mud in the pool of Siloam, and he can see for the first time in his life. Then we have something that is characteristic of John. It is after the miracle or sign is performed that things get interesting. The man's neighbors who have known this blind man as a beggar for so many years cannot believe what they see. Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Well, yes, it is. Others think, no, 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 it is someone like him. The newly sighted man has to keep saying, no, indeed, I am that man. I think we he learn here an important lesson. In many cases, when people encounter Jesus, they are transformed by him to the point that those who know them do not recognize them because of the change that has taken place. Now we have the humorous part of the story come into, the, into play. How were your eyes opened? He explains for the first time, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and he said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. And they ask, where is he? He says, I don't know. At this point, he is more focused on what has happened to him than in the person who made it happen. But he will not be left in peace. Things escalate. The crowd takes the man to the Jewish religious leaders, the Pharisees. Jesus healed the man on the Sabbath when it was believed that no one should do any kind of work. And they asked the man how he received his sight. He has to explain again. He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. As I read this, I was reminded of the times I've been in the hospital. Perhaps you can share this experience. And everyone who comes in the room, you have to repeat in every detail everything that has gone on. It drives me crazy. At one, last time I was in the hospital, I was tempted to write out a document and when somebody new came into the room, I would just hand them the sheet of paper and say, read this. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. But things get even more complicated in our story. The Pharisees are divided. Some say Jesus cannot be from God because he does not observe the Sabbath. Others say, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? They ask the formerly blind man what he says about Jesus. He replies, 
He is a prophet. The prophet is described in the Old Testament as one who is sent and speaks on behalf of God. That is, he has been sent, he represents God, he's the real deal. Things are ramped up again. Some Jewish leaders say, you know what? I bet he was not born blind at all. He could see all along, something happened, and however it had happened, now he has his sight back, he can see better. Let's check with his parents. They ask the parents, this is your son, right? You say he was born blind, right? Well, how does he now see? Now, the parents were afraid of these leaders who are very powerful, so they don't want any part of this discussion. Yes, this is our son. Yes, he was born blind, but uh, we know nothing about how he got his sight, and we know nothing about the person who gave him his sight. Kind of reminiscent to me of Sergeant Schultz from Hogan's Heroes. I see nothing, nothing. Go and ask our son. He can speak for himself. So the parents kind of throw their son under the bus. So the Pharisees go back to the man a second time. Can you imagine he's sitting there just experiencing for the first time the, the great joy and splendor of seeing for the first time, and here come the Jewish leaders again. Now they're kind of steamed. Tell the truth. We know this man who supposedly healed you is a sinner. But the man stands firm. I do not know whether or not he's a sinner. They press him. What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? And the man now is aggravated. I told you what happened already. You did not listen. And then he gets a bit sarcastic. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also, Pharisees, want to become his disciples? Ooh, they did not like that. They get all snooty. You are his disciple, but we are the disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but we have no idea where this person of yours comes from. The man answers with greater wisdom and insight than the learned Pharisees. You are unbelievable. He has given me my sight, but you don't know where he comes from? We all know that God does not accommodate those opposed to him, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. You guys, never in the history of humankind has anyone, including Moses, given sight to a person born blind. You don't know where this man comes from? This man is not from God. He could do nothing. The leaders get mad and toss him aside. Jesus, though, pursues the man and finds him. Here is the person who has performed a miracle on, the eye, on his eyes and opened this whole world of light to him. Jesus asks, do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus says, you have seen him. The one speaking with you is he. He says, Lord, I believe. And he worships Jesus. That doesn't sound like a lot to us. But it indeed really is, and we'll talk about it in a second. I think the point of this story can be found in the reactions to the miracle that has been performed and in the man who experienced the divine gift. The disciples look to old, unfounded beliefs. This man was born blind because of someone's sin. The Jewish leaders took to their own rules. No one is supposed to work on the Sabbath. So therefore, this guy is not from God or he did not perform a miracle. The neighbors are obsessed with how he obtained his sight. The parents try to suppress their anxiety. We stand up and speak the truth. There will be consequences. We don't want any trouble. False assumptions, traditions, distractions, fear. 
All these things keep the people in this story from seeing the truth. And so they are blind, and they continue in their blindness. They cannot see Jesus because of all the things that get in the way, darkening their vision. The man himself, who experiences this miraculous work, holds no assumptions about Jesus. He is not even that interested in him. Where is he? I don't know. Do you believe in the Son of Man? Whoever it is, I, I believe in him. He is focused on the one thing that does matter. I don't know if he's a sinner, but one thing I do know. I was blind, and now I see. This encounter with Jesus has changed his life, and as he stands before Jesus, he finally recognizes who Jesus is. The man who now sees physically can see spiritually as well. Lord, I believe. Lord is master, the one whom I serve, the one whom I follow, the one whom I give my life to. The Son of Man must be from God. Lord, I believe. And then we are told he worships Jesus. Jews did not worship anyone or anything except God. I took an archaeology class one time. He said one of the interesting finds is what they haven't found. They have yet to find one image of Yahweh the Jewish God. He was not put as an idol. He worships Jesus. The blind man sees that the Son of Man is not only from God, he must be God. One thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. The man who was born blind to the man who was born blind. Jesus is who he says he is because of what Jesus has done in the man's life. He has given him his sight. Likewise to us, Jesus is who he says he is because of what he does in our lives. Our faith becomes real when he gives us the ability to see, to see him through the things he does in our lives. We are given our sight through our encounters with Jesus, not a one-time thing, but a living, developing relationship with our Lord. And when that is not there, we begin to lose our sight. Things become out of focus. Our vision is narrowed. The light diminishes. The world sudden, suddenly opaque, and then darkness. But Lent helps us to see again. In this season of reflection, it is appropriate to ask, is there something that is blinding you today? What is holding you back from seeing and encountering Jesus? One thing I do know, the light of the world, the one who gives us our sight, awaits us. Let us go to him. Amen. Will you stand, please? Prepare to sing 454, Open My Eyes That I May See.
divine. Open my ears that I may hear. Let the heavens the clear. And while the wave notes fall on my ear, everything falls will disappear. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my God, thy will. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear, Gladly the warmth to tell me where. Open my heart and let me prepare, Love with thy children to share. Seeing him once again and encountering his love. And may God the Father sustain you, Christ the Lord walk with you, and the Holy Spirit keep you throughout our remaining Lenten days and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>